brothers and sisters, this is the Remnant Warrior from Kingdom Productions Network. I wanted to thank you all for watching this video and all Kingdom Productions Network content and ask that you please hit the like button because it truly helps the channel grow and new people see the content. And if you aren't already subscribed, please consider hitting the subscribe button and the notification bell so that you'll know each time we upload new content. Grace and peace. Greetings, brothers and sisters. This is the Remnant Watchman, and we are continuing our, stu our study on Revelation. And this time we are going to look at Revelation chapter 5. Now, this part is about the scroll and the lamb, all right? John is writing here, Then I saw in the right hand of the one seated on the throne a scroll written on the inside and on the back, sealed with seven seals. Now, you know, you have to remind yourself of the prophecy in the book of Daniel, where Daniel also had to write down certain prophetic events and then it was said to daniel daniel seal up the scroll uh, it is not for your time it is not for your people it is for a future time okay so this relates uh, very strongly to that chapter in the book of daniel now um the seals with which this uh, scroll is sealed we should remember that in the old days when um, a king sent and sent a message to a certain person, a governor or another king in another country, what he did was he rolled the he wrote the letter and he rolled it up, and the letter was sealed, and the king uh, put his uh, ring seal on the letter. Right, he pressed it on the letter, and only the person uh, to who the letter was written were authorized to break the seal and unroll the scroll and read the letter. So you have the same concept here. There's a scroll written. It's rolled up. It is sealed with seven seals. Okay. And there is only one who can open, who can break these seals and open the letter. There's only one. Now, he says, and I saw a mighty angel proclaiming with a loud voice, who is worthy to open the scroll and break its seals? And no one in heaven or on earth or under the earth was able to open the scroll or to look into it. Take note that he says no one um, in heaven or on earth or under the earth. Okay. In other words, no spiritual being, whether demonic or angelic, whether from the kingdom of light or the kingdom of darkness, no supernatural force in heaven can open the scroll. Similarly, on earth, no human being is authorized to open the scroll, to break the seals. And also under the earth, in the place of the dead, the place of the shades, the underworld um none of the departed spirits are worthy to open this there's only one worthy to open it to break the seals then one of the elders said to me uh, sorry uh, verse 4 and i began to weep bitterly because no one was found worthy to open the scroll or to look into it then one of the elders said to me do not weep see the lion of the tribe of judah the root of David has conquered so that he can open the scroll and its seven seals. Now, you know, we know that the lion of the tribe of Judah is Jesus Christ. When Jesus did his first ministry on earth, um, during the time of the, the New Testament, he was the Lamb of God because he is the perfect sacrifice. When he returns for the second judgment, He's not the Lamb of God, then he's the Lion of Judah. In other words, he comes as the righteous one to judge over the living and the dead. Okay? 
Now, that's very important because all over the world today, you hear so many people who paint a certain picture of Jesus, a certain perception of him. They portray him as this kind of a hippie um, who dismisses everything as, oh, well, it's fine to do that. You know, everything is about grace. Um, you know, it's this hyper grace theology that you find, um, especially with people uh, like Joel, Joel Osteen. They have this hyper grace theology. And Joel Osteen takes it so far that he even says that the Holy Spirit will never convict you of sin, which is directly against the word of God because the Holy Spirit convicts people of sin. And you have to repent. And we also know that repentance is not, definitely not, a very popular teaching today. Churches will rather talk about false theology and they will rather promote false theology like prosperity gospel and hyper grace and Calvinism and Catholicism and all these things, Armenianism, whatever, instead of teaching people about repentance, about being born again, about the reality of heaven, the reality of hell, and the reality of the spiritual war that we are in. A lot of churches, or most of them, don't want to teach on that. Why? Because in our day and time, people have become so obsessed with singing themselves to sleep with a false lullaby that's about themselves, you know, oh, I'm so good, you know, me, myself, and I, it's my own trinity, me, myself, and I, I'm so wonderful, I'm so good, I'm so this, I'm so that. I wonder sometimes what the Apostle Paul and the Apostle Peter and um, Jude and um, especially uh, James, because if you read the, the epistle of James, James, you, you can clearly see he was not a guy who took any nonsense. I wonder what they would have said if they saw what people are doing today in churches. You know, the, this hyper grace nonsense, this uh, pop psychology uh, things, um, the prosperity gospel, everything that has infiltrated the churches. We know that it is a total new age infiltration into the churches. And, you know, in today's world, People love to entertain false spirits, counterfeit spirits in the church, and they portray those spirits as the Holy Spirit. Now, we know what Jesus said about blaspheming the Holy Spirit. It is a serious, serious sin to blaspheme the Holy Spirit. Jesus even took it so far that he said, you will not be forgiven. You know, I hear about churches where people uh, crawl around on the floor and when you ask them, what on earth are you guys doing? Then they say things like, no, we're trying to catch the Holy Spirit. You see, people have become so depraved that they think that the Holy Spirit of the God of Abraham, Isaac and Jacob is like a small little ghost that you can catch somewhere, like a genie in a bottle, that you can catch in a lamp or in a bottle. And uh, you open the bottle whenever you want him to serve you. It's this little God syndrome that people have in the churches today. And because they are entertaining false spirits, counterfeit holy spirits, they are entertaining false messiahs. Okay? If a church has been infiltrated by New Age, then the Jesus that they preach is not Jesus Christ, Jesus of Nazareth, the true Messiah. The Jesus that they preach is actually Jesus Sananda. Jesus Sananda is a false messiah of the New Age. He's basically, uh, he's more well known under the uh, name or the title, the Cosmic Christ. And they also refer to him as the Christ Consciousness. It's a fallen angel. It's not Jesus Christ. Because this fallen angel, Jesus Ananda, preaches all these things. Um, you know, they channel him. Basically, the New Age Gurus channel him. And then he tells them about things like reincarnation and karma. And how to attract positive energy and, you know, all those Eastern mysticism garbage. And the sad joke of it all is 
that none of these false messiahs is able to open the seals on the scroll. When Jesus comes again, he is the lion of the tribe of Judah. He's not, he's, he's not going to be some hippie. Even when he was the Lamb of God, he was a healer. He was righteous. He had, um, you know, he had uh, pity on people who suffered. But he also didn't take any nonsense. I mean, look at what he did when, when he saw the money changers and, and the merchants in the temple. He chased them out. So Jesus is not some new age hippie guy who just says, oh, well, do what you want. You know, everything, anything goes, do what you like. I don't care as long as you enjoy yourself. It's all about grace. That is a false gospel. And it's sad to see how many people who call themselves believers fall for this nonsense. Jesus Christ is the righteous one. He is our peace. He is the King of Kings. He is the Lord of Lords. And one of the Messianic Psalms, Psalm 2, clearly says that the, the kings of the nations conspire against the Lord and his anointed one. They conspire against God the Father and Jesus Christ. And what, what is God's reaction? He laughs at them. He actually mocks them and he says, I have instilled my king on, on Mount Zion. So in other words, no matter what these uh, people who follow false theology, what they do and what uh, the Satanists do and the New Ages and the Gnostics and, the Gnostics and whoever, the, the Kabbalists and whoever, no matter what they do, the fact of the matter is Jesus Christ is the only true king, the king of kings, the Alpha and Omega. And he will come to judge over the living and the dead. And he is the only one who is worthy to break the seals of the scroll. And that's why it is so important that people need to read the word of God and that, that they need to pray without ceasing. Because if you truly pray without ceasing, then you will know that the Holy Spirit will give you the discernment to see if the church you are sitting in on Sundays is preaching a false Jesus or the true Jesus. Then I saw between the throne and the four living creatures and among the, old, the elders a lamb standing as, it, as if it had been slaughtered. Now, this obviously again is Jesus. So he is referred to as the lion of the tribe of Judah. Now, pay close attention when he is described as the lamb, it's said in the past tense. So this is something that has already occurred. We know that the, book, the, the epistle uh, to the Hebrews clearly says that Jesus was the, is the perfect sacrifice. And he only needed to sacrifice himself once for all because he is the perfect lamb of God. So he was slaughtered. He has been slaughtered. And when he returns again, he will be the lion of, of the tribe of Judah. Pay close attention once again to the sevenfold ministry of the Holy Spirit. It says that the lamb has seven horns and seven eyes, which are the seven spirits of God sent out into all the earth. So this is basically the Holy Spirit that points to Jesus, and Jesus points to God the Father. He went and took the scroll from the right hand of the one who was seated on the throne. When he had taken the scroll, the four living creatures and the twenty-four elders fell before the Lamb, each holding a harp and golden bowls full of incense, which are the prayers of the saints. Um, in some of the Psalms, you will also see that when... Um, the psalmist writes about prayers. He says that prayers are like incense. It rises like incense before God. And here we see the confirmation of it in the book of Revelation. He says that the bowls full of incense are the prayers of the saints. So there's no such thing as God who not listening to prayer. A lot of people who lose their faith say, Oh, well, you know, I pray and pray and pray about this problem and God doesn't do anything. He doesn't care. He doesn't. He's not listening. That's nonsense. That's uh, they have uh, already fallen for the lies of Satan. God hears every little prayer. In the greatest, most violent thunderstorm, the smallest 
prayer can still be heard. That's actually the lyrics of the song. I believe in everything. Um, I believe that in the greatest storm, the smallest prayer can still be heard. I believe. I, you know that song, that well-known song. They sing a new song, you are worthy to take the scroll. So now they praise Jesus. They say, you are worthy to take the scroll and to break its seals. For you were slaughtered, and by your blood you ransomed for God, saints from every tribe and language and people and nation. You have made them a kingdom and priests serving our God, and they will reign on earth. So show me any Messiah any of the false messiahs, Tammuz mentioned in Ezekiel 8, uh, Baal, Moloch, or Molech, um, uh, Kion, uh, Kamash, uh, Semiyaza. Show me any of them who would have been who would have loved his, his followers so much that they would lay down their lives for their followers. None of them would ever do it because they don't care about the people who worship them. They are agents of darkness. The only true Messiah who loves everyone so much that he was willing to lay down his life and to shed his blood on the cross for the forgiveness of sins, the only one who was ever, who ever wanted to do that, who went to the cross willingly as a lamb to the slaughter was Jesus Christ, the true Messiah. And we clearly see that by his blood, he ransomed for God people from all nations. Then I looked and I heard the voice of many angels surrounding the throne and the living creatures and the elders. They numbered myriads of myriads and thousands of thousands, singing with full voice, worthy is the lamb that was slaughtered. To receive power and wealth and wisdom and might and honor and glory and blessing. What's interesting that you need to pay attention to is that the Lamb of God, Jesus, says that the Lamb has seven eyes, seven horns. It's the sevenfold minister of the Holy Spirit. We, uh, in the previous videos, we talked about the sevenfold ministry of the Holy Spirit as described in the first few verses of Isaiah chapter 11. Now, Pay careful attention in verse, 11, in verse 12 of the Revelation 5. When they praise Jesus again, they, they name seven things that he is worthy to receive. Power, wealth, wisdom, might, honor, glory, and blessing. You see the important role that the number seven plays in the book of Revelation. Because it's, a, it's seen as a holy number. It's seen as the perfect number. Okay? Uh, even when the Holy Spirit is described, it's described as a sevenfold spirit. The, spirit the, holy, the Holy Spirit of God with the sevenfold ministry. Then I heard every creature in heaven and on earth and under the earth. So all creatures in heaven, on the earth, and even those ones under the earth cannot help but to break out in worship to Jesus Christ because he is so wonderful he is such a bright light for the world he is such a righteous king he is such a wonderful counselor that even the dead and the living and all the unseen forces in the heavens cannot help but to break out in worship and praise and glorify him they sing to the one seated on the throne and to the lamb be blessing and honor and glory and might forever and ever and the four living creatures said, Amen, and the elders fell down and worshipped. Once again, as we said in the previous uh, video where we looked at Revelation chapter 4, um, the throne of God is a throne of righteousness. 
and God's presence. His omnipresence, His omnipotence, His almighty character is so wonderful that the elders and the heavenly beings and everyone who is in His presence cannot help but break out in worship. And they praise God the Father, they praise Jesus, and they praise the Holy Spirit, who is a sevenfold spirit that goes out to all the corners of the earth. And when people talk about the restrainer, I firmly believe that the restrainer is the Holy Spirit. There's a great debate about it. Some people say the restrainer is the Archangel Michael. Others say the restrainer is the church. And then there are those, and I'm one of them, who say that the restrainer is the Holy Spirit. The moment that God withdraws the Holy Spirit in the last days, then all hell will break loose on earth. Because then nothing is keeping the forces of darkness back anymore. At the moment, he's still keeping them back. But there will come a time when God will tell the restrainer, the Holy Spirit, okay, pull back. Because certain prophecies and certain end time events need to be fulfilled. But no matter how bad the tribulation that we will go through, the fact of the matter is, if you endure until the very end, you will be with Jesus Christ in the new Jerusalem. Let me close for us in prayer. Our holy God and Father, God of Abraham, Isaac and Jacob, Lord, we glorify your name, we praise your name. Lord, we fall down in worship before you. You are holy. You are almighty. You are omnipotent. Lord, we love you and we glorify you. And Lord, we thank you for your only begotten son, Jesus Christ, who gave his life for us on the cross. Thank you for the fact that we know that he conquered death and that he ascended to heaven and that he is seated at your right hand from when from where he will come again to judge over the living and the dead. Lord, we thank you for the Holy Spirit, our guide, comforter, and protector. Lord, I ask that you bless everyone who listen and who watch this video. Lord, please help them. You know each one of them. You know the struggles they have in life and the things that they are anxious about or worried about. Lord, Lord please help them. Bless them. Pour out your love and your blessings. And your peace upon them. Thank you for Jesus Christ, who is our peace, our wonderful counselor. Lord, we thank you and we praise and we glorify your name. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen.